finding a lot of time in criticizing this view because of how Charlotte is becoming the mirror image of Ric Flair more and more in recent weeks. It's becoming more apparent that she's just trying to image her father uh, by modifying the figure four into the figure eight, uh, wrestling the same style of Ric Flair back in the 80s and 90s when he was wrestling against the likes of Harley Race and Sting. Remember how Flair used to use the chops and the running knees? Well, Charlotte is doing the same sort of thing. The figure four has trademarked for years. She's modified that into the figure eight. It's very apparent that she is trying to be the mirror image of her father, and I think it's way too original, so that's why I really think that people like Becky Lynch and uh, Paige should be probably being put over more uh, in this feud. There is way too much focus on Charlotte. That's one of the major faults of this feud. You can't say everything promising about it because there are probably more faults uh, to come from this feud than there are positive things in the way of reviews uh, for Becky Lynch versus uh, Charlotte in recent weeks because it seems like there was way too much emphasis on Charlotte and it's been that way ever since September. Nobody ever gives credit to the Divas who are making Charlotte look phenomenal. I mean Paige at just 22 years of age turning 22 earlier this year. Uh, it's amazing you know how Paige has been putting over Charlotte. It's just as equally as amazing as what Becky Lynch has been doing for her, but nobody uh, seems to be giving her enough credit, and that really frustrates me as someone sitting at home watching this all the time, because the same three or four divas as it was ten years ago are the same three or four that's always being put over. You know, you would see competition ten years ago, but it would always be the same three or four divas always being highlighted. Either Trish Stratus, Stacey Keebler, Tori Wilson, your popular divas who sold the sex and sold the wrestling were the ones that were always being put over. The same way that Hulk Hogan was being put over in the 80s, and how Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart were being put over in the 90s, and then eventually by the early thousands, John Cena and Randy Orton took over that responsibility. Well, the same kind of wrestling psychology applies to the divas, because we're seeing the same three or four divas as it was ten years ago, in the way of Trish Stratus and Mickey James being put over and given that distinction of carrying the promotion in the way of the Divas Revolution and carrying the Divas Division, which is something that I really don't want to see for that. I want to see different things happening. I want to see different storylines. I want to see different feuds. And I want to really see this feud between all three members of Team PCB taken to unprecedented heights and in the end get everybody talking about how phenomenal of a program it really was. Because this feud with Team PCB and all three members being involved in it could really be one of the highlights of 2016, could really be the pinnacle and really be the standard bearer for all Divas in WWE to get to, especially the Divas on NXT who are just learning experience all the time, like Alexis Bliss and Bailey, who can always learn uh, from these Divas who came to Raw and smacked them before they were ever given the chance. So I think there's an incredible opportunity uh, with this feud to create something special, which is why I'm really hoping that WWE don't drop the ball on everything happening with Team PCB. I appreciate how they've broken up. I would even appreciate it more if they eventually let bygones be bygones and got back together to create something different in the Divas. Divas Revolution, let's say Nikki Bella comes back, reforms uh, Team Bella, they patch things up, they get back together, and Team Bella starts running roughshod over the Divas Revolution, and then out of nowhere we see the reformation of Team PCB, I'd really go for that, I'd even go for a few between, say, Team Bad, featuring Sasha Banks uh, taking on Team PCB, that would be awesome too, but Sasha Banks, not forgetting about her, she is obviously the one who is over when it comes to Team Bad, and she is someone who's going to be being pushed uh, in a very short period of time here in WWE. We look for her to come up through the ranks in WWE and probably be WWE Divas Champion faster than a lot of people. If anybody knocks off Charlotte and is able to knock off Charlotte at this point, it obviously is Sasha Banks. And if you were to determine a champion in the way of popularity and reactions, right now it will be Sasha Banks who is obviously over with WWE fans. From the We Want Sasha chance versus Danny every week in WWE shows, it's just amazing how many people are out there supporting Sasha Banks. And that's because they know uh, the talent that goes with someone like Sasha Banks, which is something you really can't hold WWE wrestling fans down for um, because they're just letting their voice be heard about who they want to see on top in the Divas Revolution. Is it really in the Divas Revolution and the Divas Division, Charlotte, who they want to see on top? Or is it someone like Sasha Banks? If it were up to wrestling fans, someone like Charlotte probably wouldn't be WWE Divas Champion because of just how much she resembles her father and just how she's way too original. That's the biggest issue and the biggest thing that frustrates me about Charlotte, how she's the mirror image of her father when you have incredible talents and names like Sasha Banks and even Tamina and Naomi, who are incredible wrestlers who are never given the benefit of the doubt, who never had that chance to reach up and grab that proverbial brass ring. There for a while, a number of years ago, when the Funkadactyls first broke up, it seemed like Naomi was really going to be the breakout star of the Funkadactyls and the Divas 
women's division, it seemed like she was going to be given more opportunities to compete for the Divas Championship and let her presence be felt in WWE and make a name for herself. And they threw that down uh, in the gutter because they didn't seem like they had enough confidence in someone like Naomi. Whatever happened to that? And whatever happened to the pushes of all these Divas who were in line for pushes like Emma? It seemed like you were going to do something with Emma and some array there. Uh, for a while, but it doesn't seem like you're going to be doing anything with these Divas, because once again, the focal point of the Divas division seems to be on the same three or four Divas. Team PCB is really where the focal point is lying right now, and I can't say if I really am impressed by that. I am to some extent, but not impressed by how they're just focusing on Team PCB and the three members, the three remnants uh, of that group, when you have two other factions, Team Bella and Team Bad, with Sasha Banks, uh, Brie Bella, Naomi, Tamina, so many phenomenal talents who are just never given the benefit of the doubt and really just sitting on the proverbial bench while we're seeing people, the same three or four, being pushed with the same champion all the time. It's kind of like how AJ uh, was champion back in 2012, 2013, a total of 295 days. We saw AJ as champion, and you couldn't give AJ more rivalries to have with so many incredible divas from NXT. You just had her feud with the Bella Twins and people who were in the division at that time, and we saw the same matches reiterated all the time from pay-per-view to pay-per-view, week in and week out. Three-on-one matches or four-on-one matches or five-on-one matches, triple threat matches, fatal four-way matches. Every single month, very short matches, not enough exposure. It's the same issues and the same kind of adequate concepts reiterated all the time in the Divas Division, and something really had to be done with it. This is why the TNA Knockouts Division and the Ring of Honor Women's Division is far more superior and always been considered the top wrestling promotions and divisions in the world because they offer more of an option to women. I mean, when women can go to WWE and just compete for one singles championship, when they can go to TNA Wrestling and compete for tag team titles in the Women's Division, what do you think women is going to want to do? They're going to want to go to the TNA Rockets division because of the options uh, that it's providing people. They're not going to want to go to WWE's Divas division where they could be waiting years uh, for the opportunities that are be given the way of Charlotte and Becky Lynch and Paige. I think we need more of an opportunity in the Divas division. We need longer matches and we just need a bigger, better way of exposure for the Divas division than what we are seeing because until we see that, uh, in the division, we're going to have more critics out there finding time and criticizing the Divas division, especially when you have someone like Charlotte, who is nothing more uh, than the mirror image of Ric Flair. It was true what Paige said. You know, people made fun of Paige for referring to Charlotte as Baby Flair. But it was really true what she said, because really that's what she is. She's just Baby Flair, and she's just the mirror image of her father. Again, you know, I said that she was way too original here early on in the commentary on my YouTube channel, because she is. She's way too original. At least Paige and Becky Lynch are different, because they don't come from wrestling families. They don't have histories of wrestling in their families. They're just there because they have a passion for wrestling. They left their homes of Ireland and England to come to the United States to learn how to wrestle. To go to WWE to train to be wrestlers. They got a job on NXT and they really impressed a lot of people. And that's why they're there. That's why Paige was chosen to be the one to knock off AJ Lee and send her home. And that's why we haven't seen AJ Lee since. Because they know there was more promise in someone like Paige than there ever was with someone like AJ. Maybe there was promise with AJ when they thought AJ was going to stay with WWE and work with the best of the best and beat all the big names in the division and go on to become one of the greatest Divas champions of all time. I'm sorry, but one reign of 295 days does not define who you are as a wrestler. One reign of 295 days does not define you as the best. Maybe five or six reigns of 200 plus days as champion defines you as the best, but what? Not one reign defines you as the best in the division, the best of the best, and the one to beat. Especially when you have talents like Paige and Becky Lynch and Charlotte who are striding to be the best of the best and can have more than one reign as Divas Champion, like Paige has already had. Here's the thing, Paige has a lot more experience than Becky Lynch or Charlotte. Paige has already won that Divas Championship at least two or three times in her career. Charlotte is surviving off one reign as Divas Champion. We don't know how long it's going to last, but by the track record of her family, she's probably going to have up to four or five reigns as Divas Champion. Or she may lose the championship based on how officials are impressed by her and never win it again. 
based off her family's track record and the number of championships they won, probably uh, she will continue to want to be the mirror image of her father and win the Divas title in the four, five, six times. Maybe she's going to want to be a 16-time Divas champion. And it wouldn't surprise me none if that was written into Charlotte's script, into Charlotte's storyline of wanting to win the title more than once. So, you know, you're forgetting about how she has to lose it. 14, 15, 16 times to get to the point of her father, once again proving out the point that she's just the mirror image of her father, and that's not really what wrestling fans want to see. You ask wrestling fans what they want to see, and they're going to tell you they want to see Sasha Banks on top. That's why they've been chanting, we want Sasha, the same way they've been chanting Undertaker when it comes to post-WrestleMania interviews with Sting. They want to see Sting versus The Undertaker, and they want to see Sasha Banks versus Charlotte for the Divas Championship with with Sasha Banks getting over, and Charlotte providing an opposition uh, for Sasha Banks. That's what they want to see. And I don't blame them, because I am someone who's been putting over Sasha Banks. I am one who believes that Sasha Banks, before anybody, deserves a push in the WWE Stevens division. If not her, Summer Rae, because Summer Rae is a phenomenal talent as both a wrestler, an entertainer, and a movie actress. It's amazing. Reality star, movie actress, wrestler, she's got the whole package. She's the whole package deal. And it's beyond me why you're not pushing a phenomenal talent like Summer Rae, who is my favorite diva in the Divas Revolution in 2015, and will be in 2016, because I think it's going to be one of her biggest years. Even though she hasn't done much at this point, I'm expecting big things to happen for her, just as I am for Alexis Bliss and Bailey when they eventually get call-ups, the WWE whenever in the fuck that's going to be. But the thing, you know, going back to how the same three or four divas in the way of champions and challengers are always given that responsibility of having to carry the fucking show. There's really no need of it. Especially when you have over 50 divas on the fucking NXT roster and they're never on WWE television or they're used as extras, which is something that's really a miscarriage of justice in the words of Gorilla Monsoon, because they've been waiting so patiently for an opportunity that's probably never going to come for them as long as we have the same three or four divas as we did ten years ago carrying the product, which there really is no need of. It's really unnecessary, and I think wrestling fans are just crying out for a reprieve in the divas division. And what I mean by a reprieve are different feuds, different storylines, and something worth talking about in the division. Not saying that Charlotte and Becky Lynch aren't getting it done, because they are. But where is Paige factoring into all this? She's just disappeared. She's not on television anymore. And if she is on television, it's either as an extra to put over somebody in the way of a Brie Bella who could be having more done with her character Why they're treating Brie Bella the way they are. It's beyond me after the phenomenal year she put behind her in 2014. Maybe it's because she has a lot going on emotionally with her husband Daniel Bryan not returning anytime soon and doing things outside of the ring for WWE. Maybe it has something to do with that. But, you know, you have so many incredible talents...